Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Season 3 Qualifying Rounds in EU West. Today we are still in the round of 32. We're going to go up with Katie Mia team, or whatever, actually called a Nexus, up against Revenge is Served Cold, or Team Risk. I'm the Forecard Jester, with me is the bird. Stream is the word, sir. Yep, definitely indeed, and yeah. It is the second game of the, um, the night, morning, whatever you like to call it, ever on each side of the world, but yeah, it's gonna be a really good one. Axius, uh, Nexus Esports Axius. Used to be known as Kidney's Melem team, I think that's why they get the KDMI8 um, stuff right there, but um, you might know some of them, Overpow, some other great players over there. Pretty much a mix match of what XGBT or the uh, WCG 2011 team was, and um, some Team Acer, some of My Revenge. A lot of mix and match together. One of those teams that you know came from other teams. So there you go, at Nexus, uh, Rust Gaming, Revenge of Cold, Pentakill, Grease Gaming, that's all we got on them. Good luck. <laughs> Good and luck. yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck to the fight. Yeah, and that'll win you any round right there. Uh, yeah, so Overpow there, as I said, uh, we were talking about him earlier in Heroes of New Earth Pro, now seen me in League of Legends. And, you know, both these teams, again, in the round of 32, so they've made good strides here in Season 3 in order to get to this top tier. And that's exactly why we're having this tournament. So, um, yeah, best of luck. Have fun. All right, so bands, Oriana, Lisa, and Kazix, Twisted Fate, Amumu, Malphi. We did see Amumu uh, last round in the RT5 game up against Triple A, but unfortunately they did drop it 2-0. We also saw some pretty powerful uh, Kazix bursts from them as well, but we're not going to see either of them. And again, we see that Twisted Fate ban. I mean, Twisted Fate is a really good global presence, especially with Destiny into Gate. So you can't really stop that. If anything, that's with a lot of control, a lot of damage output, but they do give away that Evelyn pick that Overpal might be locking in really soon. Really interesting to pick that Rise first, so... Um, Rise, easily counterable for a mid, but then again, with the new Season 3 upgrade, it's actually a pretty good mid to actually pick up, so... Overall, in general, we'll see what'll happen. Overpal probably gonna be locking that Evelyn in. EU, EU meta likes it, Korean meta likes it. I don't know, not so much NA, but truthfully, that's just like one of those picks that you must pick up, that Evelyn pick. Yeah, Evelyn, uh, ever since M5 really brought her to the table, has definitely seen a surge of popularity. But I'm looking at Erotic. If he's going to focus and lock in with that uh, Misfortune bottom lane, then again, with that Black Cleaver and her bullet time, it actually applies all four stacks of the damage, uh, or sorry, of the armor debuff, uh, if she can actually land it. So we have been seeing this strategy more and more in EU. I haven't really seen it too much in NA, but I think uh, Korea is just all a flush with Misfortune Black Cleaver strategies. You're probably going to be seeing it today because a lot of people were actually practicing it yesterday for the NA call, so um, yeah, we'll be seeing some more Black Cleaverage with the AD carry, which a lot of people, especially in the NA side, don't really totally like. But again, Korea kind of sets the standard and we kind of follow all the Koreans right over there through that. As uh, Chad is pointing out, Shen and Blitz are both open. We did have a Shen last round going for that static shiv first uh, for the split pushing capabilities, but I don't think we've actually seen a Blitz crank in a while. He was banned both games last uh, last two games. I guess that's just one of the things that the other team was actually playing up against. I think that was for, uh, can't remember the name, something five? Red, Red Team 5 or something like that. I'm so sorry Robot about that. Robot the 5. <laughs> Robot the 5. There you go. Something like that. Having a massive trouble with that RT5. <laughs> <laughs> All day. But, um, I mean, overall the picks are coming up. Ezreal, Sona. We're probably going to see MF, Tarek. So in a burst kind of kill lane over that bottom lane. We'll see if Erotic is actually going to be playing that ADC. But overall, I feel like a Nexus is going to play for that early game. Except for that Rise. That's it's a really interesting pick. Probably going to be used for that late game, but probably in Evelyn in the jungle. We're going to be probably seeing that rise in mid. Literally, we're going to be trying to pick up with this ADC MF. We'll probably see a pretty good kind of burst combo and then have that rise uh, carry out to that late game status. Well, the Loft being picked out as well as Cho'Gath 
for a uh, Riven serve cold. A lot of good control for our team fights, so if they can get to that mid game for um, Pentakill, Grease, Gaming, it'll work out for them. But if they can't get to that mid game and get killed in the early game, it's not going to be a really fun time for Risk. Well, we see that Sona and Ezreal. How many times are we going to see Sona Ezreal, I wonder, in this tournament? <laughs> Definitely a very big EU flavor, but again, Cho'Gath out there in that jungle. I mean, it will really come down to the skill ceilings of both teams. Like last round, we saw some really interesting comps out of RT5. And I was actually listening to one of the interviews with uh, their support player saying that that bottom lane, the AP Trist and Kha'Zix, blows people up on solo, uh, solo queue, no problem. But in a team setting, of course, you know, it is a much different atmosphere. So that's why you, see, you don't see things like Draven uh, that often. Really great pub. Punisher, not so much in a Team 5, but either way, it does look like Lulu now picked up, as well as Zin. I'd be very curious to see if Zin would be going into a lane as opposed to that jungle, but I have a suspicion that Overpow will be swapping out. It could be, but then again, they would have Raz in mid and then Evelyn top. It's probably going to be Zin actually um, top lane, which would not be the worst case, probably against that Olaf, but then again, probably don't know where everything is going and yeah we'll, we'll see but yeah you're, you're exactly right and it is going to be a really really interesting lane setup for nexus all right so we are going to be locking in it will be another anivia so once again our best frogging impression is going to be going <laughs> to the table zane on that and yeah as he's uh I don't know. Well, we still have a Zin actually swapped out to Overpower, so it might actually be that double AP. And, you know, double AP is not, or wasn't, you know, that uncommon at one point in Season 2. Mage in the middle and get that double AP, double Wota comp. You know, maybe a little bit of more of an old school comp. True, but another thing is, EU, I haven't really seen them run um, Evelyn top lane, so this could be a uh, clever maybe top lane with that rise which would be really interesting to see against a Olaf, maybe even a Cho'Gath. There's a double what? What? Oh, okay, never mind. Sorry. I thought okay. I, was, I, I, was, I was looking at double smite right over there. And I know, guys, you don't see any blockers from my stream, but wow. I was like, double smite? Was that really going to happen? <laughs> Double smite. I mean, I don't know. I mean, we saw in a tournament that uh, Dota team back in ESL running smiteless jungles. So double smite could always be on the table as well. Uh, interesting to note, though, however, we have three teleports on the table. Not only our top, but our mid for Revenge Served Colt, as well as Rise on uh, blue team and Nexus. Yeah, um, I mean... Yeah, we'll see on that. And Nivea with teleport, not a really big surprise actually. Uh, mid lane picking up teleport, Lux, Nivea, um, Katarina, even even Evelyn has done it. Although Evelyn not so much, but Katarina and uh, Nivea and Lux. Those are three that you've usually seen. Um, kind of notably, it was I think Elo Hell's um, mid laner did that and got like an 18-0 and during I am um, Singapore, so. I mean, it works. Teleport's a really good surprise, a really good tactic. And technically, on top of that, you had the Home Guard Boots uh, upgrade, which is oh, a yes. very, very trolly <laughs> thing. But, I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. But, uh, truthfully, Teleport's a really good, um, you know, Dragon Secure as well. So, that's why we see that with Olaf. But, moreover, for Nivea, just going to go Secure Kills. For Clever, I'm, I'm thinking he's either going to be a 1v2 lane, and this is pretty much good for a setup for 1v2 because you do have Erotic and uh, Arquel with that heal and barrier, so it could work out that way. Or maybe Clever shouldn't be mid and Zez is going to actually be top. Oh, that X notifier. <laughs> Got an email from the Hotmails. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. Uh, one minute left to go until we do get solidified into here. Uh, other th things to note here on the summoner spells. I mean, uh, we do have heal on erotic. So we don't actually have an exhaust on team and nexus, and we only have that one ignite as we do have barrier on misfortune. Typically, you see teams bringing at least two ignites and an exhaust to the table with that smite, and then the top laner maybe sometimes that teleport. But this round, three teleports, the cleanse, the barrier, the one exhaust. It's it's, it's a little atypical when you think about it. Yeah, definitely. But the thing is, you know, on the other side for risk, you don't have that um, ignite on as well. Literally, no ignites on the team. So, mm. truthfully, it's going to be 
interesting to see in that fact, but I'm pretty sure with the Nexus, how they're set up, they are probably going to go for a 2v1 over uh, top lane, try to push down on Olaf. Again, Olaf is heralded as one of the best top laners in the game right now um, as a champion, if for the EU meta at least, but even on the NA side as well. So pushing that down really fast would really help out. Probably also why that uh, Flash Rider also has a teleport, just to come back in the lane a lot faster if he needs to go back really early. All right, just saying goodbye to Medroid in his chat. Look at that Jace looking real good. Once again, guys, Season 3 Qualifiers EU. You're here with the Four Core Jester and the L3 IRD. Both of us are streaming here on Twitch, so pick your stream, pick your poison. But we are here in the round of 32, a Nexus versus Revenge uh, served cold. But if you can't find them on the brackets, it's because they are some ridiculous name of uh, Katie Mia... K Katie Mia Latim? I don't know. It's uh, match number 10 on the bracket, so that is what <laughs> we are watching here in the round of 32. Thank you all for joining us, and uh, very excited to get this game rolling. And yeah, definitely, I, I was about to say, can I order like a number 9 or number 11 as a wall on top of that? And um, yeah, Kidney's Medley team, again, if you haven't heard of them before, XGBT, Team Acer, My Revenge, there are a lot of players all together combined into it. Erotic. I haven't actually heard of before, but pretty much everybody else from Nexus, I've had at least a little bit of inkling actually looking in. So I'm liking the picks, I'm liking the choices in skins as well, but fortunately for not, I do like the early game of Nexus. So we'll see what will actually come out of this between both teams. All right, loading in. Hopefully we're not going to have that uh, extended pause that we did see. Kind of did throw off the tempo of game number one back in AA versus the RT5 with those pauses. So hopefully none of that today. Everyone is uh, ready and rocking. Look at some of these skins, Bird. Triumphant Rise, Imperial Jin. I love the Jurassic Cho, though. The Jurassic Cho is probably the best one out of it. I mean, no offense to Arcade Sona. Arcade Sona, I think everyone has that. So um, that's unfortunate. Other than that, though, really? No bird skin? Nivia? Nothing? <laughs> nothing? Nothing, Zane? Thanks. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. No problem. All right, a Nexus versus Risk ready to roll. As uh, game number one going to be starting off, hopefully Medroid will sort out uh, the scoreboard. But, uh, you know, right off the bat, potions. We got those machetes coming back out. Two flasks for everyone. And the Doran's Blade opening once again for the ADC. It's interesting that the ADC is doing that, and we'll see what's going to be actually coming up for the lane situations. Again, Rise technically not a mid if it can be, but we'll probably play up mid, and oh wow, Zazus is going to retake to top, so... And Nexus is showing their colors right in the beginning go, while uh, Risk still haven't really chose what they're going to do. Again, they're going to be defending for that level 1 again. Again, the team of the Nexus has a better level 1 pretty much into where they're going to be coming in. So Risk has to defend that blue buff because, you know, Cho'Gath isn't really dependent on the blue, but it really would help him out. Wow, Nexus really doing some really good jobs. Going to try to ward out that red buff, and that that is actually the place that they're going to. That's going to be a really good um, sign and tell um, where Risk is actually going to be. Yeah, it's kind of risky, though. Uh, to go to only two players up to that red. You can see him dance around. They do got, they'll get off those wards and a nice spread out, looking for those invade points. No real interest here out of a nexus. So as you said, even Chogath, blue is Maybe great, but the void uh, the void spikes for him, uh, just, you know, I mean, they don't cost any mana. So he will be able to complete, you know, even if he doesn't get it, but no invades going down. Jin's going to be starting off red, interestingly enough. Yeah, interesting also as well that we do have Clever on that mid, so it's going to be a Evelyn top lane, no lane switch actually happening. So really interesting to see that both bottoms are not going to have the Ignite, and we're going to see what will happen. And right when I say that both bottoms are going to not have that Ignite, all of actually going to be over that bottom lane, while we do have a two top lane with that Ezreal and Sona. So lane swap actually happening for Risk. So Risk... I. I don't know, why would they do that? What advantage do they get other than just trying to take out an Evelyn? Uh, now, by herself, Evelyn, I mean, she is sort of a glass cannon this early on, and the mobility plus the long-range poke factor f coming out of risk uh, should be able to dominate this lane pretty handily. I mean, she does have that advantage of being invisible, but, you know, once she does get close enough, she will be seen, and then they'll just kind of pounce on her. 
I mean, the thing is, you don't want Evelyn to get to that level 6 status and really be at least semi-farmed. And, you know, with Evelyn now, just going to have to just phase out this TV1 lane as much as she can. It's going to be pretty hard, and is, is going to have to help out with that. Overall, probably will go over to that top lane, but they want to shut down that middle lane. They want to shut down this bottom lane as soon as possible, especially with Olaf. Definitely another carry that you don't, or tank, you don't really want to get in that like making status. Now, Olaf, if you notice, does have that blue buff, so they didn't give it to the Cho, they gave it to the blue, uh, to Flash Rider, so that he can just keep farming as much as he can with those axes, and both of our single laners, about the five or six uh, creep mark at this point. Now, we got Jin coming in from behind, it is going to be a really early tower dive, but it will be a really nice first blood. Can we take down Erotic? No, he will be able to survive. One more uh, tower shot is all we needed, but, you know, once again, Double ups coming out, those Impia shots reducing the effectiveness of those healing potions and just able to poke him down for a really nice gang. That's going to put us up in a nice spot here for a Nexus. Yeah, Nexus is going to be able to put some more pounding on that bottom lane turret before the teleport was used for Olaf, so that's a good thing. The Zazus, on the other hand, is going to take a lot of damage and actually doesn't have that teleport, so technically has to stay in lane and check with everyone and kills for you, kills of you, will be able to push out even more so. so. Truthfully, it was a really good trade to get that first blood for uh, Nexus, but truthfully also as well. Um, Revenge Star Cold didn't really lose too much off of that. Now we do got a stun coming out here. Nice wall, the silence, the rupture going up. This could be a kill on top of Rise, but he will force out that flash. So he will live to see another day, but still pre counter pressure coming up here from Revenge Surf Cold. Not enough to solidify them a kill. Now they are going to be swapping out again. Look at this. We got the both the bottoms now going to be in the top lanes. They're going to be sending Evelyn uh, to face off against Olaf. I wonder if we're going to see a counter swap again just to keep that Evelyn down. Yeah, that would probably be a good thing. Overpower actually going really aggressive on Nivy, and Nivy probably still has eggs, so she's going to be okay. And Cho'Gath going to cut in, Teleport coming in, Clever going to go in, Don RG is going to be taking down, Overpower going to be taking that kill actually, so T0 on the Zin going to be really powerful for Overpower to get into that late game phase. As I said, Han Bros, man, they know what they're doing. <laughs> 2-0, except that milk fat. He never got to rank 1 like he said he would. <laughs> That's another time. Overpower up 2-0. Has 13 creep kills. Actually the same as Cho'Gath, but those double kills is going to accelerate him so far ahead. If he can keep up this pressure, he will be a dominant force in this early game for a Nexus. Yeah, definitely. And we'll be seeing what will happen in another swap up again. Flash Rider going back up the top. Evelyn's still going to be over that bot. They're probably... With all this, with the lane swapping, pretty much for uh, Nexus and on top of that, Revenge Surf Cold, I feel like Nexus is actually taking out the better of it right now. 17 to 18 on the CS score, Olaf is a little bit ahead, 28 to 26 on the AD carries, and now I'm kind of proven wrong, so maybe we'll see um, a Nexus come back into it, but truthfully, I feel like a Nexus still should be able to have that 2v1, like what I said before. And Nexus probably should have 2v1 from the start, and unfortunately for not, they were the ones that actually got 2v1 upon. Guys, it is just directed camera. We have absolutely no control, and there is no human behind any of this. It is all algorithmic. So bottom lane, in comes that overpower, and look at kills for you. Just absolutely destroyed uh, overpower with that. Uh, wriggles now, so not only a little bit of armor, but that attack damage and the lifesteal will just do him some amazing things this early game. That's going to put us up now 3-0 as well. We got the kill there for Evelyn. That's going to be some, you know, decent, uh, decent pressure for her. But out goes the flash, and the arcane is not going to be enough. And down goes Evior, or Evior, as he does drop that bottom lane. Now we do got mid lane Zane going one on one against Silaver. But he is going to be more on the retreat. He does have that egg form, but I think that uh, Ryze might actually be able to just burst him on down. It looks like we'll be able to get through the jungle. So he'll be all right. Lulu up there as well, just trying to keep Olaf at bay. And again, you notice this, the lane swap. They really, really do not want to deal with an Evelyn. Yeah, now Evelyn with those two kills on top of that, it's actually super ahead of Olaf. <laughs> We're gonna see a lot of damage come up, and unfortunately for our Flash Rider, might be taken down. Flash in and our kill gonna be able to take out that kill onto Flash Rider with their great little burst up from that double up and onto the fear shots. 5 0 and a dragon in their pocket. A 7 minute dragon means we're gonna see the next one before the 15 minute mark, in and around uh, thir uh, 13 13 or so. Oh, stream lagged a little for me there. 
should be <laughs> okay for everything. But 5 0, 3,000 gold before the 10 minute mark. This is not looking good for Revenge Serve Gold. No, fortunately for now, Emrys is going to actually lose her first tower probably over the top lane. Olaf is going to try to run back as fast as his Viking Boots can get into it. But actually, they're probably going to jot it down to about the 1-4th health to go back again out. Same for this bottom lane turret, but again, Zass is a little bit better right now. Does need to go back, but probably does have enough to pick up at least a DF, or sorry, not DF3. Uh, Lucky's Cogitech if we wanted to go through that, but if I were going to pick up that Leandris tournament, and work it from there, and actually... Top turret's gonna go down Red for that cause. Yeah, so more global gold on top of everything. Evelyn's still going two on one. She's gonna pop that speed boost, go straight in, is gonna juke out the Mystic shot. But look at the damage landing on top of kills for you. Can we have the catch up here from Overpow? He will be able to jump in there, but unfortunately did not even get an assist. Just so scared this bottom lane. Uh, Don Regu gonna be coming down there as well, but mid lane Zane versus uh, Rise once again. Zane just backing off, does not really want to go toe to toe. But as far as I know, he still has his egg up. Yeah, he hasn't popped up the egg. Don Regu is a uh, pretty interesting Chogaf right now. He just kind of getting there a little too late. Like his ca his ganking ability not really there. I mean, he got a good slash off from Clever, but other than that, um, there's nothing else that Don um, RG has actually really done anything for the game, so unfortunately for not, Chugaf really not showing up in the power. Probably hurt because he did have to give up that blue buff, but also because the 2v1 pressure against Olaf just was way too much. Pure shots, damage output, double up, and all that good stuff from Misfortune just doing so much for the team of a Nexus. Right, so Don Regu as a as a I'm just going to call him that better than R.G. is actually a StarCraft player. It's, I know it's not him, <laughs> but I find that an interesting uh, name choice. But still, top lane going down, bottom lane going to be the same treatment by the same destroyer. This misfortune, 65 creeps leading the pack, but uh, pretty much tied up with that rise. So they've been actually creeping pretty decently before the 10 minute mark. Uh, over 60 creeps cannot say the same uh, for their competition. Look at Zaxxas going in right on top of e Evior and just ridiculous damage coming out. Here comes that teleport as well. Oh my goodness, Ryze is going to be able to take down that Ezreal. No problem. Kills for you going to be dropping for the double. And now Evelyn just leading on a merry chase. The triple kill coming out for this Ryze player. And that is going to solidify a 9-0 lead. That is why you take teleport as a mid lane. Yeah, I mean, there's just too much happening for NX to actually lose out. I mean, they're like Bank of America. They can't break. No problem, indeed. I mean, when you have a 6k gold lead in about 10 minutes, that's that's a troubling time when Zane is actually going to get popped down from that egg form. Finally, and Clever going to go flash in, probably finish up the kill. And actually, it was overpowered to finish it up. But overall, <laughs> just so much damage, so much team. money. <laughs> and um, yeah, not enough time for the team of Risk. Overpowered just tanked the turrets like, sup? And then he just casually poked the bird and dinner was served. Yeah, my goodness. 10-0 with that uh, Riggles. He also has those tier 2 boots. We got the BF sword already for Misfortune as well. 83 creeps to her name. And uh, the mask coming out, the haunting guys for Evelyn. So, oh my god. Don Regu absolutely destroyed. So Lab are going to be taking another kill to his name. And Overpower just making these plays happen. This is going to be a, a salty game number two coming up. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, Overpower slash everybody on the Nexus saying, well, let's just kind of push it in. I wouldn't be surprised if they picked some interesting picks for game two, truthfully. Rex didn't really show in anything. I mean, they did start off with 2v1, but I think their 2v1 thing was a little bit pre curious truthfully i i feel like they should have been the ones that just stayed standard and yet they're the ones forced to 2v1 and unfortunately for not this is kind of where they stand 11 0 and nearly 10,000 gold we almost have enough gold lead to match the number of minutes in the game that, that's kind of the situation at this point in fact we almost have the same for kills like all we need is one more kill and a few thousand gold and we're pretty much on par for a nice 20 minute surrender uh, probably, or it could be another like 18 minute. I I don't feel this is Armageddon status. If you guys don't know about Armageddon, I am Singapore. Look it up. 
But yeah, Flash Rider <laughs> coming in, Clever is gonna go in there, and the gank from Misfortune is so strong, Clever actually gonna be able to pick up the kill right over there. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what Risk can do, and truthfully, what I think Risk should probably do is play it out on the line for the game too, but other than that, um, take the experience, because technically, yeah, we have no idea who Risk is, actually, truthfully, and um, you know, you're getting streamed, you're getting probably streamed about 1,000 people running off of Red Duran stream, or I uh, actually don't remember the writer's name, I'm sorry. Medroid. But, Medroid, yep. there you go. Yeah. Um, but truthfully, you know, just a lot of good stuff for Risk to get even this far, so we'll see what'll happen, but... I mean, it just seems like um, Team and Nexus Esports, they're just ready and railing to go, and I mean, it's showing. It's showing today. There's that 13 minute mark, Dragon spawning on time, and it's about to drop just as quick. Uh, 13 and a half. If, well, we will get to the 19 and a half minute mark, so we could have that possibility of the third Dragon, but look at the burst coming down onto Don Ragu. Had the bullet time going off as well, but the damage on top of Zona Crescendo at the end, but game over, man. That Sona has now dropped 0 4 0, and I think majority of the kills have been this Evelyn, who's up 4 0 2 now. It's just. Pretty much we're walking all over Revenge Surf Cold, but that's why they're named Revenge Surf Cold, because they can get their revenge. They need an event like this so that they can get their revenge. It makes sense. It, it could be that, or they could be just kind of cold and they're just out of it today. I mean, as uh, we did with the last game, truthfully, it's your first game, probably on a big live stage, you know, you have the jitters, you have the bugs, you can't really have the yips as well, but I mean, the yips <laughs> the are there yips. too. <laughs> the yips, yeah. So um, overall, just, you know, take it for what it is, and the risk is going to probably take it not where you would want to see. There's no such thing as bad publicity. I mean, we might rag on that Armageddon GG team, but hey, <laughs> we're still talking about it months later. So yeah, there's no such thing as bad PR. I mean, it is getting their name out there. They're getting that competitive experience, and who knows? Maybe you know, they'll come back really strong in game number two after they, you know, iron out all those nerves. You never know. I mean, it really is kind of that situation where we could have these hugely unknown teams or just these new form teams actually getting into pro status because of this tournament. That's that's an interesting thought. You know, just throwing them into the the ring like that against. You know the triple A titles. I mean, uh, that could be true, but it also could be where you see one of these little games where, truthfully, you don't really know about the team, and truthfully, technically, EU meta, EU, EU teams as well, you don't really truthfully know all about them. And Nexus, so, I mean, again, 2011 WCG champions or, or WCG second runner-up, sorry, um, but they did pretty well over there. XGBT members stuck like that. Formed a really good team overall with some other free agents as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that truthfully a Nexus could uh, possibly do into this next season, and this is actually one of the teams you want to kind of look out for for that round of a round of well, I want to get my money in for that season three because truthfully, seeing out how they're doing 14-0 right now, 16 minutes in, it's really, really, really detrimental for the other people who are actually watching this right now. Hmm. Sure enough. I mean, it's only the round of 32 today. Round of 16 is going to actually start up tomorrow. Look at that burst. Kills for you just has absolutely no answer. And once again, the game over screen is going to be flashing out there. We do got that blizzard going on. Look at the bullet time just doing work against Zane. Overpower going to come in, not grab the kill. We'll give it away that round. But, you know, misfortune with that cle uh almost with that cleaver. She does have that bloodthirster already with the brutalizer. Down goes top turret, down goes mid, as well as that inhibitor. 16-0 going for the shutout, and we're now passing 14,000 gold difference in this game, Bert. Ah, it's a scary thought. Clever gonna go in on a flash rider, and he's gonna go pop up on the Don RG, and Don's gonna try to get out of there. There is an Evelyn ult, there is a damage output, and there is probably gonna be a GG. So good stuff coming up from Clever, and also onto Evelyn. Here comes Zane coming right back in there. Clever could be in trouble. Is this going to be the first kill? No, Risk could not secure that one. And unfortunately for not, we're going to see a push-up back for Nexus on this top inhibitor. 
That's going to be two inhibitors down before the 20 minute mark. I'm not even sure we're going to get a chance to surrender. Uh, this push actually doing a lot of damage up against the Revenge Serve Cold team. But yeah, no first blood for them, so to speak, as uh, they are going to be heading on back home. I was curious to see if we're just going to see a five man fountain dive just, uh, just for style. But uh, alas, I was disappointed. Yeah, unfortunately for not, that he did not want to give a pendant kill to that Zane slash the bird. Come on, you have to give some love to the bird, right? We can look at the CS scores, we can look at the game, but overall, in total, I think just the team play of Nexus really showed out. And especially with that Zen, Overpower did really, really well, um, controlling pretty much the lens where Cho'Gath wasn't even truly um, seen, literally. Only like one gank out of everything, and unfortunately for not, um, yeah, this is where we are, where it's an 18-minute Baron, it's pretty much uncontested because there's no wards, but over on top of that, they are just going to be able to push in, get that bottom of the and probably push in before that 20 minute mark. Ooh, an 18 minute Baron, I like where that's going. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have any cleavers yet. It doesn't quite matter because we're just going to kill everything. Where's Ryze going to go? Bottom? Yeah, he's going to split push up that bottom as we do have risk. We're going to be checking out that Baron with that true shot. Fortunately, they are going to notice that it is unfortunately missing and that Ryze bottom lane is going to be kind of equipped with it. But with those two inhibitors down, there's absolutely nothing that we can even do in terms of map control. Like We're really just confined to base at this point. Yeah, and then Villain going right in. Zane is going to get that egg pop, but he's going to get a flash out. Actually, egg was not even up, so Zane's just going to keep on pushing. Unfortunately, uh, the Nexus is going to keep on pushing, and Nexus is probably going to go for this one. Then we have the inhibitor turret down. Still have this bottom inhibitor turret going to be coming down. Still two lanes of super meters coming up as well, so there's going to be enough tanking for this Nexus turret. And a Nexus, probably going to gain a Nexus in about the next 30 seconds. Too many Nexi being talked about right here. But yeah, need to win that game before the surrender can go out just for the style points. I like that manor ward that went down on top of the inhibitor. Just saying, yeah, I don't need this anymore. But down goes all three. Bullet time coming out, kind of confined to the fountain now. And that's going to be the Nexus kill at 1927. 19 kills and 18, almost 19,000 gold up. That is some impressive teamwork coming out from Team Blue. And next to esports, just doing some really great work. 1932 overall, in general, that means well, Nexus is probably gonna get this done in about 19 minutes again, maybe, or we'll risk probably uh, take it back and say, well, we're just gonna play standard and we're gonna actually get on the door of a Nexus. Well, they are going to have this, if we know Medroid, he's going to have this next game ready to go post haste, so I'm just going to change up the team names for the overlay, but very strong game, guys, very strong game. That was uh, that was a little disheartening for Team Risk, but again, that's, that's why they have to lose, because revenge is served 